Hello once again, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher, this time with episode number 46B, the answer of my What Is It Mystery Tool series. And there's some items on here, I guess, that aren't tools. But let me start out by talking about sugar cane. And I was recently in Louisiana with Don Snyder, and Don had literally a sugar cane field in his backyard so he went out and cut off a piece for me and then I, I cut this even shorter here just a minute ago and then he cut me a little piece and I chewed on it and, and uh, uh, enjoyed the sweetness of it. I, I guess I had never seen sugar cane. Quite a few of you knew who what, uh, what this was. Some thought it was bamboo and I, it looks like bamboo. It even looks like a corn stalk but it's a big crop down there and he explained the harvesting of it and the planting and all of that and uh, I found that very interesting. So the pith in here, so if you squeeze this there will be quite a bit of juice coming out. This is heavy and still wet. When they're done squeezing it and processing it this fiber uh, pithy part, pulpy, is uh, used as a fuel but it used to be used a lot in insulation. Maybe it still is but as far as I understand, Celotex insulation, which they used to use a lot of, was made from this, and they call this bagasse, or bagasse. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly for you Frenchmen out there. Now, uh, the next item I want to talk about is, uh, is that knife. I do not have the knife here. The knife is in Don Snyder's shop, and here we are in the little town in uh, southern Louisiana, not too far from Baton Rouge, and Don stooped over there. He, he stands taller than I, but he, he's showing me his treasure trove of stare tools that he had there, and we were quite enraptured by that, and a little bit in the front there is the South Bend 13-inch lathe. They used to have one of those. Well, now I'm going to go up on the computer and have uh, show you pictures of that knife, and we'll talk about that. But before we go up, this sugar cane is quite heavy. It's very tough to cut with a knife. But anyway, I've got a piece of it here in the Bernard pliers. Let's squeeze on it and uh, check out the juice. See, that's what they're extracting and processing. And I'm going to take a, a bit of a taste of it. Very sweet. And you can see years ago down south that uh, the kids just loved to suck on a piece of this. Perhaps they didn't have any money. You know, I didn't have much money for candy when I was a kid either. But there it is. And they would squeeze it much harder than that, get all of the juice out of there. And there's the bagasse. That's the first time I ever did this in my life. I hope you found that interesting. I really did. And I'm showing that to my grandkids. Alright, I'm at the computer now. Originally these pictures were taken in the little town of Paulina, Louisiana. So I do not have the knife here, but these are pictures that I took of it. And first of all, I was very shocked in this video that so many people knew what this was because I did not have a clue. But many, many people knew, or they were researching by the name that I gave them, and I wish I had not told them the name, Battery List Telephone Company. That may have helped them, because people are doing research, although many people recognize it, were able to identify it, a wooden handle, steel blade, and then that sheath, which is round, is uh, made of brass, Apparently other companies made these for the United States Navy as well, but there's another piece of it just for comparison. There's a plug. I also found out this is a very high value knife. I think they're worth about $500. And again it has a serrated edge there, or I guess you could call it a bit of a saw blade, or you could cut through a rope or something else like that when you were diving. And I can still see Gilbert Rowland or one of those actors putting on a helmet in a movie and, and uh, wearing a knife like that. But I did not know what this was and I'm glad to find out and yeah, I found it interesting again that so many people knew what it was. 
Just one other comment. First, be sure and read all of the comments, both in this video and the preceding one, which was the question. But someone pointed out that this company that made this knife, Battery List Telephone Company, were the same suppliers or manufacturers of the telephone that the divers used when they were down at the bottom of the ocean and that it did not require any electricity. I had never heard about that, but uh, that's an interesting side note, I believe. Just one more note about Don Snyder and his wonderful wife Ruth, who are very hospitable to us, and thank you very much for everything you did. They took us out to dinner, and we stayed in their big, beautiful Winnebago motor home for two nights, and uh, he showed me a lot of the local things around uh, the Mississippi River. He's very close to the Mississippi River, so that was that was fun. And he's got quite a shop there. He had just purchased a milling machine and uh, a surface grinder, and he's just got a lot of neat tools and mechanical tools and things like that as well. He's quite a craftsman, quite a woodworker. Next item. One Mr. Joe Way, and that is his website, and uh, he has a channel, and I've talked about him before, and I thank you, Joe, and he wants this back, so he gave me a self-addressed envelope to send it back, but this is a Sterrett number 273 leather gauge. A lot of people had this correct. I was surprised, but some people were saying it was a bolt gauge or a wire gauge, and you know it's very similar to other gauges. And this is one that I showed several years ago, and I'm not sure if we ever did determine what this gauge was for. It's quite a while ago. I kind of forgot. That's nickel plated, by the way. So let me show you first of all in the Sterrett catalog. I don't think this is offered anymore but it's a leather gauge or a sole gauge. This is the 1958 Sterrett Catalog 273 leather sole gauge. I will zoom in on this and you can pause your video to read this if you have a notion. That portion and then that portion. So shoemakers Shoe manufacturers, I suppose cobblers and uh, maybe saddle makers, things like that, that, that work with leather would use this to determine the thickness of the material, of the leather. And here this is, is what, about a, an eight. As usual, it's a beautiful Sterrett item. All of their tools were so nicely made. Here's a piece of leather belting that barely fits in there. And that's about what? A ten or a little bit less. So that's the purpose of that gauge and I was surprised how many knew what that was. And thank you Joe for sending that item to me and you'll get it back soon. And the final item here, and I was surprised that not many knew what this was, or is. It's a, a tool, KD brand, that's just K-D, used in automotive work for removing front shock absorbers. And I changed a lot of front shock absorbers in my life, and I never knew there was a tool for it. We used a vice grips, or the blue wrench, or a grinder to get the top one off, because they, you just, there was a, a stud that had a flat and that was used to hold that while you turned the nut with another wrench but of course it would quickly round off I'm sure and uh, it was a, a nightmare to change these leaning over the fender and I'm just so glad I don't have to do that anymore but this was adjustable and available at that time and uh, every auto store and that KD company made a lot of specialty tools some of them rather inexpensive this looks like it might have cost a little bit more than some but this is of course obsolete so that completes this edition of what is it 46b hope you enjoyed it be sure and watch some of the back issues because remember there's 46 of these now and uh, double that and you know, what's that's 92 
videos in all that I have done in this series. So, and if anybody out there can find uh, unusual tools to send me uh, actual item, I prefer the actual item over pictures. This is Tubal Kane saying thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.